After his success as a general in the Union Army during the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant was elected President of the United States in 1868. Grant upheld the Reconstruction policies set by Congress, which included maintaining federal troops in the South to protect the newly granted civil rights for blacks. But he was soon distracted by a series of scandals that plagued his administration. He may have been an exceptional military commander, but Grant had little experience making administrative policy decisions. He relies on his handlers to create his cabinet, to set up his government, and in a lot of ways dictate what will be the priorities of the administration. And many of these people put in place in his administration, his cabinet officials, turned out to be hopelessly corrupt. This corruption led to a number of scandals in the Grant administration. One involved a railroad company called Crédit Mobilier, where in 1872, stockholders cheated their own company out of millions of dollars. Among the stockholders were members of the United States Congress and Grant's own vice president, Schuyler Colfax. Another blow to the Grant administration occurred in 1873, when Jay Cook and company, one of the biggest financiers of the building of a transcontinental railroad, declared bankruptcy. This created a ripple effect that caused many other businesses and financiers of the railroad to also go bankrupt. This financial panic led to a national depression, because outside of agriculture, the railroads were the largest employers in the United States. Millions of Americans lost their jobs. The depression was followed by another scandal known as the Whiskey Ring. In 1875, government officials, including Grant's private secretary, Orville Babcock, filed false reports to cheat the government out of $3 million in tax revenue on liquor. Although it was never proven that Grant himself was involved in any of these misdeeds, his administration suffered greatly in the eyes of the public. The scandals of the 1870s essentially weigh down Grant's administration and divert a lot of attention and energy so that they lose a lot of political capital. They don't have the ability to maintain a vigorous reconstruction policy. And that's key in understanding why the federal commitment to reconstruction, it's one of many reasons why the federal commitment begins to wane in the 1870s. 